Hi Internet! So this is going to be a new series of videos called Mini Reviews. Or what I really want to call it is expensive games that I've been playing in my collection. But we're just going to call it Mini Reviews. I decided that, you know, I have all these games and I asked what people want to see and someone suggested Mini Reviews of what I've been playing. So that's what I'm going to give. These will just be weekly or bi-weekly additional videos. They'll come out some point during the week whenever I, you know, finish a game or something like that. And they'll just be mini reviews of games I've been playing. And I'll just say if the game was, you know, good, bad, or mediocre, somewhere in between. You know, I'm not going to give a definitive, you know, point system. That's for people who do this for, like, a living. Um, this is still just a hobby for me. So, what I've been playing recently is Wolfenstein 3D for the Atari Jaguar. I have the box here. And, uh, so let me get this out of the way first, is that I did not grow up with Wolfenstein or Doom or any of these types of first-person shooters. My first first-person shooter that I can actually recall, like, playing all the way through was COD 4. So, keep in mind, I'm young, <laughs> so I don't have, you know, I didn't have a gaming PC in the 90s. Hell, I was just, you know, a baby in the 90s, so what the hell do I know about Doom and Wolfenstein 3D? Um, but I've also never gone back and really played them to begin with. So, this whole genre of first-person shooters where you're kind of stuck in the center with the gun and you can't look all around using mouse movements is still kind of a new concept to me. Um, so let's talk about the game. Um, I played through it, and I had a really good time playing it. I was actually <clears throat> very surprised that I enjoyed it as much as I did. That's not to say there aren't some drawbacks, but I want to talk about the good first. The first is the graphics. I think it looks great running on the Jaguar. Um, I know it's, a, you know, meant for a PC of the time, and, you know, I could go play it probably for free on a browser somewhere, but it's kind of cool to be able to play it on, you know, a cartridge like this, on a retro TV like my Sony Trinitron over there. So that does add to the appeal, but I thought the game looked pretty good. Um, I didn't notice any really gl graphical glitches there's not really much to really say about the graphics i mean it's kind of like an i don't really know the term i want to say isometric view but that's not it um the graphics are limited for what they could be but for what they are they're pretty good um there is the obvious where if you get too far away from something it just kind of looks like pixelated mush but I'm not going to fault it. That's just a product of the time. You know, in, in any game, even today, if you get far enough away from some, something so it's this big on the screen, it's going to look like a bunch of pixels. So, whatever. Um, graphics are good. Um, just, you know, a fair warning. If you do pick up this game, um, I know it's obvious from Wolfenstein, but there is a lot of Nazi imagery in the game. So if that's something that you feel like you won't like, don't pick up this game because it's everywhere. If you're someone like me who understands the contents of this game, then go ahead and play it. Uh, controls, since I'm looking at the controller. Eh. And I, I know that's not really an answer, so let me explain. Oops. Put that in here for now. There are three buttons on the jack. A, B, and C. I hit I hit B first. So A, B, and C. A does jack all for what I could tell. It says on the main menu it controls your speed. It did nothing for me in game. I don't know if I just if you have to hold it, if you have to tap it, if you have to double tap it. I tried all of it and it did nothing for me. And I know it works because I've used this on other games. So, I don't know. B is interact. So that's how you, you know, interact with the menus and find secrets and doors. C is shoot. Uh, select, or option, I guess, on this controller is how you go through your weapons. Pause is pause. The D-pad is how you move. 
and none of these buttons do anything down here as far as I can tell. And there are no like back trigger buttons, so. The controls are, like I said, eh, they work, they work, they work. Let, let me, let me, let me not be so negative. They work. You can play the game through and you will be fine using the controller. However, it's not as fluid as obviously a mouse and keyboard would be. And it's a bit janky because you only have the D-pad to move and you don't have the fluidity of an analog controller. However, it's serviceable. It does the job. Um, Gameplay-wise, you go around and you shoot Nazis. I mean, that's the entirety of the game. If you're expecting anything else, you're wrong. <laughs> you go around, you gun down Nazis. That's what you do in this game. And it's fun. Um, I did enjoy the variety of enemy types, how it's not just simple, you know, what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, it, it's not just like guards mainly. There is zombies too. There's zombie Nazis, if you would. And then there's the sort of the main bosses who are sort of mecked up, jacked up uh, boss, boss Nazis. And um, they take way more to take down and they can wipe out your health in seconds. And actually, one thing that I really want to point out here that I really enjoyed and that I kind of don't like about older games is a lot of older games. Now, this is just coming from me and someone who grew up with a save system. And a lot of these older games, you know, three hits and you're dead and the whole game's over and you have to start over. With this game, you know, obviously your health goes down and you die. But when you die, you just pick back up at the start of the level of the level you're on with just the default pistol. You have to go around and get all the better guns and stuff like that. And you can survive with just a pistol, which is really nice because I was afraid of it being, you die, you know, once or twice and then game over, you have to start over all the way from the beginning. No, not the case. However, I have not found a way to save in this game. If there is, please let me know. I haven't looked it up online or anything, but from what I can see, just playing the game, I don't know how to save, so I just had to keep my Jaguar on and pause when I wasn't playing it, so do with that as you will. Uh, another thing I was worried about was aiming consistency and bullet consistency. What I mean by that is, um, let me use this controller, I'm sorry, this cartridge uh, as an example. So pretend you're aiming straight. I'm going to aim straight at the camera, and the enemy is here. You know, obviously you expect pew enemy go down. But I was always afraid of that if the enemy was slightly off to the side like this and you fire, the bullet will always go straight no matter what and miss the target. So you constantly have to be perfectly aligned in order to hit the enemy. Not the case. There's a good bit of leeway between where you aim and where the bullets hit. So you could be, if I'm aiming straight at the camera and you aim like off to the side, maybe an inch, you know, you could still fire and it will hit the guy and register. So no problems there. Another uh, negative I would say is that the first, this is going to sound kind of weird. The first couple levels are really easy. You can get through them in under a minute each level. Just zoom right through them. Unless you're like me and you take the time to look around. But you know. You could just go right to the end if you want to. And then there are some levels later on that are just really unnecessarily difficult. Um, you walk into a room and there's little corners that the guards hide in. And then you walk in and there's a key that you have to get to open up a door. And it's typically a blue or yellow key. You walk in and eight guys come out and swarm you. And you have to back up and run away. Um... And I find that a little cheap just because, like, I get it. It's an old trope. You know, you walk into a room and, you know, a bunch of enemies are there. But um, your health goes really fast in this game when you're not paying attention. So it's very quick to just die. Um, but uh, one thing that I just remembered was uh, the AI in this game. Um, I was actually kind of impressed by it. I'm, 
I'm always, uh, I'm always kind of unimpressed by old AI, if that makes any sense. Just because, you know, there's not much they could really code it. You can't code a functional AI, um, like you can today. You know, there's some, coding was kind of limited back then. But these guys will follow you through doors, will open doors and close them, you know, will patrol. And I really enjoyed that. It adds a small sense of realism to the game, if there's anything like that. Because, you know, enemies, if you go through a door and it closes, the enemies aren't typically won't just forget about you. They'll come after you. I really enjoy that. It adds to the suspense of the game. Overall, um, thumbs up, approve. Fun game. Um, is expensive, though. Uh, I'm only bringing that up because uh, this box copy, and this box is beat to hell. But it's, I mean, it's it's still a, one of the few box games I have for the Jaguar. Um, was about a hundred bucks. So you know, take that as you will. But if you could get your hands on it and you have a Jaguar, which I know is hard to come by these days and is really expensive. But if you happen to have one. I'd say give it a shot. It's a fun addition to have, and, you know, I think it's a good game. So, that's it for this mini-review, although I've kind of rambled a lot, so it's not really a mini-review, is it? Um, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'll have another one of these either next week or the week after, along with the main video on Wednesday. And thank you very much for watching.